випускник. Та напишіть, звідки ви, щоб я знала географію наших викладачів, звідки ви доєдналися до нас. Київ, Чортків, Рівне, дуже приємно, Сарне, Мукачево, Харків, Одеса. Рада вітати всіх з Одеси, Львів, Ірпінь, Ропивницький, Вінниця, Терноти, Київ, Покровськ. Київська область, Донецька область. Дуже приємно, що ви доєднуєтесь до наших вебінарів. Полтава, ніколи не була в Полтаві. Житомир, Київ, Снаменка, Суми. Здорово, Стри, Полтава. Вітаємо вас на нашому вебінарі. Ви класно були на ваших семінарах, дякую. Дуже приємно, що хтось тут знає мене. Так, можливо, я більш популярна в Південному регіоні, в Одесі, в Одеській області. Проте вела декілька семінарів в Києві також. Приємно, що пам'ятаєте. Вінниця, Здорово, Стара Константинів, Кирія. Доброго ранку. Рада вас бачити також. І Сабмір. І Київ. Бачу, що люди поступово доєднуються до нас. Ми даємо вам декілька хвилин, щоб у вас налагодився звук та відео. Перед початком Чернігів, Львів, Луцьк. Доброго ранку. Люботин, Кропивницький, прекрасне місто. Харків, Київ. Пиряти, Волин. Старі Петрівці. Прекрасно. Доброго ранку, всіх вітаю. Івано-Франківськ, ніколи не була в цьому місті. Харків, Львів, Львів, Івано-Франківськ. Дякую, друзі, що доєднуєтеся до наших вебінарів. Зараз Internal Education активно працює в форматі онлайн. Кожного тижня ми готуємо для вас серію онлайн-тренінгів. І щиро раді, що ви доєднуєтесь до нас і в першій половині дня, і в післяобідній порі. Нам дуже приємно, що в цей такий непростий час, в час карантину, наші вчителі прагнуть розвитку, вони доєднуються до наших вебінарів. Я впевнена, що дізнаються щось нове і використовують ці ідеї в своїх онлайн-уроках та офлайн-уроках. Я надіюсь, будуть використовувати, як тільки ми вернемося до нормального стилю викладання. Також Дінтерал Едюкейшн та Пірсон піклуються не лише про викладачів, а і про наших учнів. І я впевнена, що багато з вас знають, що на період двох місяців компанія Пірсон абсолютно безкоштовно відкрила доступ до своєї онлайн-навчальної платформи My English Lab. Напишіть, будь ласка, плюсик, якщо ви доєдналися до My English Lab за цей період. Побачимо, чи багато з вас доєдналося. Так. Це приємно. My English Lab – прекрасна онлайн-платформа, де вже є розроблені всі готові матеріали для плідної роботи з вашими учнями. Подобається працювати з My English Lab як вчителям, так і учням. Також ми підготували спеціальний проєкт для тих вчителів, які працюють з молодшими школярами, тому що, напевно, їм зараз найважче. Це наша окрема платформа, яка називається Dental Education Young Learners. Що ж ви можете знайти тут? Тут зібрані всі корисні матеріали для викладачів, що працюють в перших-четвертих класах. Fly High Digital Resources. Це і онлайн-бібліотека, і короткі відео, а також всі розробкові матеріали до FlyHive. Також тут є інформація про всі наші вебінари, що стосуються молодшої школи, які ви можете переглянути, відповісти на питання та отримати сертифікат участі. Також саме на цій сторінці ми будемо анонсувати всі наші майбутні вебінари, що стосуються початкової школи. Тому, якщо ви працюєте в цій сфері, в цьому секторі, заходьте, там дуже багато корисної інформації. А також там є дуже гарне посилання на платформу Mail до ресурсу Primary Academy. Primary Academy – це дуже багато інтерактивних 
вправ, граматичних презентацій, відеоресурсів, які можна використовувати як онлайн, так і офлайн. Тому, якщо ви працюєте в початковій школі, обов'язково загляніть на сайт нашої платформи для Young Learners. Також багато з вас дивилися наші лайвстріми на Фейсбуці з нашим методистом та викладачем The London School of English, Крісом Кербі. Щочетверга Кріс ділився з нами дуже корисними ідеями, своїми топ тіпс і розповідав, як проводити ці активітети в режимі онлайн та офлайн. Вже на цьому тижні естафету Кріс передає моїй колезі, прекрасній Мар'яні Петречко, яка є автором, власне, підручника Fly High Ukraine і експертом в викладанні в початковій школі. Тому слідкуйте за нашими оновленнями на нашій сторінці Facebook в Internal Education та доєднуйтесь до нас вже цього четверга. Наразі ми проводимо невеличке опитування на нашій сторінці у Фейсбук, де ми хочемо знати вашу думку щодо часу проведення цих лайфстрімів. Тому заходьте на нашу сторінку, обирайте зручний для вас час і вже четвер Мар'яна Петречко чекатиме на вас і радо ділитися з вами якимись своїми практичними ідеями, які можна використати при викладанні в початковій школі. А також Мар'яна радо відповість на всі ваші запитання в режимі лайк. А сьогодні ми продовжуємо серію наших вебінарів, нашого марафону «Don't get her» який триває з 21 квітня по 4 травня та складається з п'яти прекрасних вебінарів. І ось ви можете бачити їх перелік. І давайте ви мені в чат-боксі напишете, які з цих вебінарів ви вже відвідували. Я особисто переглянула прекрасний вебінар Геннадія «Get fun with go get a grandma». Ага, і перший, і другий. Багато учасників пишуть, що переглянули вже два вебінари, і ви знаєте, це прекрасно, це дуже тішить. Прекрасно. Сьогодні ми продовжуємо нашу серію вебінарів, і з вами ми будемо говорити про інтеракцію на уроках з використанням підручника GoGetter, а вже о третій годині вас чекатиме Олена Міходуй, яка поговорить про автентичність підручника GoGetter. І декілька слів, власне, про правила цього марафону. Як ви знаєте, всі ви маєте прекрасний шанс отримати підручник GoGetter. Правила дуже прості. Вам потрібно відвідати хоча б один вебінар, вживу, а чотири подивитися в записі. Проте я дуже вам рекомендую переглянути всі п'ять вебінарів вживу. Потім, після перегляду всіх вебінарів 4 травня на свою скриньку всі ви отримаєте п'ять запитань. Всі п'ять запитань базуються на контексті п'яти вебінарів. Ви відповідаєте на запитання та відправляєте свої відповіді. 500 перших щасливчиків, що дадуть правильні відповіді на всі 5 запитань, отримують підручний гоугетер подарунок. Тому 4 травня уважно слідкуйте за новинами, чекайте листа на вашу пошту, провіряйте скриньку спам, бо інколи листи від нас приходять, на жаль, в спам, відповідайте на запитання і, я впевнена, удача вам посміхнеться і ви отримаєте цей відповідь. Прекрасний ресурс в подарунок. Бачу, що люди ще до нас доєднуєтесь. Вітаю вас знову і знову. Вас вітає Одеса. Привіт, Покровськ. Окей, and I believe that now we can start speaking English and we can start talking about GoGetter, the beautiful resource. And today the topic of our webinar is Get more interaction with GoGetter, and the speaker is Natalia Mukhnenko, the methodologist and the teacher trainer from the Internal Education Odessa. Well, and I would like to start our webinar with a very simple question: Why do we teach English? So, type in your ideas in the chat box. Well, I am more than sure that we do it not for money, 
Yeah, we teach English to communicate because we love it. Perfect answer. It's interesting. I agree. We like it. We teach for inspiration. Definitely, teachers get a lot of inspiration while teaching. Yeah, it's cool. It's communication. It's good for traveling. Yeah, we adore English. It's very interesting and at the same time difficult. Yeah, it's important that it's kind of a new life skill everybody should obtain. Yeah, it's interesting to see the results of your work. Yeah, definitely. So there can be many different reasons for teaching English. But of course, when we think about our job, yeah, and the reasons why we are doing it, we first of all think about our students. And of course, we want our students to master grammar. We want them to understand the difference between present simple and present continuous. We want them to use mixed conditionals perfectly. When we teach English, we again think about our students and expect them to master vocabulary, to speak the language fluently, remembering all the words and language chunks and stuff like that. Of course, we expect our learners to have excellent reading skills, yeah, and we are doing our best to choose interesting articles for them, to choose interesting resources to make them feel engaged into the process of learning. Of course, we want them to have excellent listening skills because listening is important. And we always remember about exams like Xenio or any other international exams because exams actually show the results of our work. But, but when we speak about teaching any, any language, we do understand that our main aim is speaking. We want our students to speak nicely, to speak fluently, to speak naturally. And, of course, while uh, teaching English, yeah, we are trying to create different situations yeah, during the lessons yeah, where our students can practice different types of speaking, yeah, when they can present some <clears throat> monologues, or when we motivate them to work in pairs, yeah, to make up some dialogues, to work with their partner, to discuss some ideas, to agree or maybe disagree. Also, we, the teachers, are doing our best to organize group discussions, yeah, to make sure that our students can cooperate, can be nice team members, and can express their ideas and respect the ideas of other students as well. But we do understand that uh, speaking in the classroom is a little bit artificial. Do you agree with me? Because there is always some help, right? When, for example, they are preparing a monologue, they can use the dictionary, they have some time for preparation, they can use some useful vocabulary, some useful phrases, which is given in the books. When they Mm, are trying to make up a dialogue, they feel pretty safe because they talk to a person they know pretty well. Again, they might use the book, the dictionary, whatever, to help them. When we speak about group discussions, yeah, they help each other, they know each other, they feel comfortable working with each other. And whether we like it or not, we are always there, the teachers who are ready to help, yeah, whenever our students need that help. But what happens when they leave the classroom? Yeah, speaking in real life is quite different from the one which is in the lesson. When they go abroad with their parents or maybe when they go to summer camps somewhere in Europe, yeah, they lose confidence. You're absolutely right, Natalia they might feel embarrassed, they might feel ashamed to speak, and uh, they might understand that knowing present simple and present continuous, or maybe understanding the difference between conditionals, uh, might be <clears throat> not enough. It's not enough to, to know the ver uh, words only, yeah, and to, to know grammar perfectly well. 
yeah, they can experience cultural shock. Yeah, you know, I absolutely agree with you. And here we understand that to prepare them for real life, we should teach them something more than just words, <clears throat> grammar, listening, uh, <clears throat> reading. Yeah, we should teach them some language which will help them to understand and to be understood in different situations like checking into hotel or maybe ordering food in the restaurant or giving or asking for directions. And now I will show you some phrases like this, the phrases I am talking about. So which topic do you think they relate to? I'd like some lunch. Would you like a starter? What are the specials? Yeah, <clears throat> the topic is food, eating out, ordering food at the restaurant. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I'm sure that you will agree with me that to know words lunch or starter or specials is not enough. Here you should remember all the phrase. Here you should understand whether it is formal or informal. You should know which phrase you can say as a customer and which phrase you expect to hear from the waiter or a waitress. And how do we call the phrases like this? I will give you a small hint. We call them... Yes, these phrases belong to functional language. You are absolutely right. Yeah, it's functional language and, uh, you know, functional language is the language that you use to perform various functions. It's pretty simple. And now, in your chat box, uh, could you give me an example of any function we can perform using the language? So, typical functions of the language. What are they? Yeah, giving advice. Yeah. Right, agreeing, giving directions, inquiring, yeah, asking for permission, showing support, communication, refusing, boo booking into the hotel, asking for directions. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So there are different situations in which we actually need to know uh, some phrases. Yes, yeah, some functional language to sound natural and not to feel embarrassed. Yeah, and they can they can vary. <clears throat> they can be interactional, like giving opinion, expressing surprise, showing the interest, or they can be transactional, like shopping, ordering food, asking for direction, checking into a hotel. It depends. And now we are going to have some fun with you. So <clears throat> I will show you three <clears throat> functions, yes, and uh, then I will show you these phrases and you will uh, type into your chat box the number of the function the phrase expresses. So let's start with the first one. I'd like a class of Coke, please. So what function it is? Is it? Yeah. You're right, it's number two, it's ordering food. Well, let's move on. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, many of you are typing number one. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's a good point, it's about a green. Very good. And now phrase number three, what about going to the cinema? You're absolutely right, it's making suggestion. Well, but uh, how can we know that? Of course, we are experienced, we are teachers, and we've been learning and teaching English for ages. But uh, how to make sure that our students learn and remember these phrases until the moment they need to use it? Well, in good authentic resources, we usually have these beautiful boxes of 
functional language where all these phrases are collected like in one place, which is really good because anytime the student needs to remember some phrases, he or she can get back to that lesson and find these phrases in the box. But again, pretty often it happens so that we teachers have no idea like, what to do with them. Yeah, okay, we read them aloud, students read them aloud a few times, and actually that's it. Yeah, and many of you are typing practice. Of course, I do agree with you, practice makes it perfect. And today we are going to talk about three-step algorithm of working with functional language. So we are going to follow three simple steps which will help us or which will help our students actually to remember the phrases and to use them correctly when necessary. And as an example, I'm going to use this beautiful resource which is GoGetter. As you know, GoGetter series uh, works well in lower secondary school. And as an example, I have chosen Go getter number two, which works well in form six. So, could you remind me how old are our pupils in the sixth form? Yeah, you're absolutely right. They are 11 or 12. So, now while covering this letter, remember that we are talking about kids who are 11 or 12. So, let's have a look at this beautiful page. Yeah, that is a communication lesson from GoGetter. What I uh, love about GoGetter is its uh, clear structure. You know, it's just open and teach. You open the book, you look at the page, and you clearly see your lesson from the very beginning to the production stage and at the very top of the page i can see the outcome of the lesson yeah i can phone a friend so i know what to expect from my students i know that at the end of the lesson they have to produce a short telephone conversation okay and <clears throat> our first step of teaching functional language is notice. So make sure your students can notice these phrases. They can see the context in which these or those particular phrases are used. So how can it be done? Of course, it can be done in many, many different ways. We, the teachers, can read them a conversation and they can hear some phrases. Of course, they can read a dialogue yeah, and come across some functional language in the dialogue. We can listen to a radio program or any kind of conversation. But we know that modern generation, modern generation of students they are visual students. They love watching videos. You know, I have a son who is 12. That is why I know it for sure. Kids who are 12, yeah, they love getting all the information from YouTube. They love watching videos. So, why I love GoGetter? In GoGetter, we have a lot of different types of videos. And actually, in communication lessons, where the students are supposed to learn some functional language, we have a short video too. And now we are going to watch it. And before we watch, yeah, I want you to be ready to answer one, one question. So, why is Elena calling Amy? Remember the question, and now let's watch the video.
Hello. Hello, Mr Riley. It's Eleanor here. Oh, hello, Eleanor. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Can I speak to Amy, please? She isn't answering her mobile. Yes, just one moment. Amy, it's Eleanor. For you. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, Amy. What are you doing at the moment? Nothing. What about you? I'm reading a magazine. I'm bored. Do you want to watch a movie at my house? Great idea. See you in 15 minutes. OK. See you soon. Well, so why is Lena calling Amy? Yeah, the main reason she she is bored, yeah, and she wants to spend some time with her friend. So look, a very short video clip, but it can change the lesson dramatically because they love watching videos and actually this video clip shows a really nice context, yeah, in which these particular phrases are used. Yeah, it's a nice video, I agree with you uh, 100%. So, uh, having watched the video, yeah, I asked my student one simple question. Yeah, why is Elena calling Annie? What is my next step? Of course, my next step is to motivate them to see these phrases. So, what can I do? I can ask my students to listen uh, to this conversation once again and to underline the phrases in the text script which relate to the topic talking on the phone. Well, of course, you can watch the video once again, but you know, sometimes it can be pretty hard to watch, to look at the audio script and to underline. That is why I would recommend to listen and to underline the phrases. And again, this is one more point which I love about GoGetter, that you have many different options to choose from. For example, the conversation we've just watched yeah, it can be read or it can be just listened to. If you have no, for example, a TV set in your classroom, no problem, you can easily listen to it. Or maybe if you have forgotten your, I don't know, tape recorder, so you can just read it. Okay, so uh, the next uh, step uh, would be, yeah, underlining the phrases. Yeah, I see that some of you are writing, they can underline a lot of other phrases they can but we can uh, read this conversa conversation once again with them all together and you as a teacher yeah can say that look this particular phrase it's Elena here or can I speak to Amy these phrases relate to functional language which is talking on the phone okay what is our next step our next step will be this beautiful box yeah, here all the phrases are collected in one place, yeah, and the students are asked to listen and repeat. But what else can I do here? Remember that these are kids uh, who are 11 or 12, so I think that it's a good idea to analyze these phrases a little bit with your students. For example, if I have a look at the first phrase, hello, it's Elena here, we can say that, okay, students, look, can we replace hello? Yes, yeah, so we can say good afternoon, good morning, it's Elena, it's Elena here. Or for example, Elena, can we uh, replace Helena? Definitely we can. We can use the name of the person who is calling. Hello, it's Natalia calling. It, hello, it's Igor here. Can I speak to Annie? Yeah, we can draw our students' attention that speak actually can be replaced with talk to. Can I talk to any place? You know, to when uh, your pupils are 11 or 12, it's important to show to them that uh, some phrases, uh, some words uh, can be substituted. I remember myself uh, being a kid, you know, and we started uh, learning English in the fifth form. And I remember when we learned the phrase about um, asking about the color. And uh, I remember the phrase, what color is the pen? 
And, uh, you know, it was like one silly phrase to ask about the color. And if someone at that time had asked me to, to make up a question about the color of a pencil, for example, I would have probably said, what color is a pen and pencil? Or what color is a pen and book? Because actually, I had no clue at that time how to change the words to ask about what you want to ask. That is why if you don't want your kids to, to say, uh, hello, it's Yelena here, no matter who they call, show them that hello or maybe Yelena can be replaced. Well, so that was our step one. We created <clears throat> a very nice situation. Yeah, we watched the video to <clears throat> give our students a chance to notice these phrases. Also, we looked through the audio script yeah, where uh, they saw uh, these phrases in the context. And also we analyzed these phrases a little bit in the box. Now we are moving further and our next step will be work out. Yeah, having presented the meaning, it's time to practice. So our first step of a workout will be drilling. It's very important uh, for, uh, for functional language uh, to be drilled. Why? Because here intonation matters as much as the words themselves. And the more they repeat the phrases, the better they remember them, which is good. Yeah, and drilling trains memory and spelling. You are absolutely right. So what can we do here? We can use front chain. Yeah, when we start drilling from the very first word, like, can, can I, can I speak, can I speak to any, can I speak to any, please? Yeah, and then they repeat, can I speak to any, please? Or we can use back chaining. Yeah, when we start from the last word, please, any, please, to any, please, I speak to any, please, can I speak to any, please? And when you drill the patterns in different ways, yeah, whether it is front chaining or back chaining, remember about general algorithm, yeah, that first of all, you, the teacher, pronounce the phrase, and after that, they pronounce the phrase whole class, yeah, and then you nominate some separate students to pronounce the phrase. And again, uh, more uh, practice makes it perfect. When we speak about uh, functional language, you should always remember about linking because no one ever says, can I speak to Amy, please? And usually it's a problem of our students. They forget to link the words. They use every single word separately. They stress every single word. That is why that is why it's very important to draw their attention to linking, uh, to show them that the words are linked and some endings are kind of swallowed. Yeah, can I speak to Amy, please? Can I speak to Amy, please? Because when they go abroad and when they hear native speakers uh, saying something to them, yeah, they will not hear every single word separately. Yeah, they should remember that the words are linked. Also, when we drill uh, the functional language phrases, it's very important to draw our students' attention to intonation patterns, yeah, to illustrate that in <clears throat> positive sentences, intonation usually goes down. Hello, it's Elena here. I'm afraid she is out. But, see you soon, right? But in questions, the intonation usually goes up. Can I speak to Amy, please? Can I speak to any place? It's very important again to feel natural, to feel to feel fluent, uh, to show that you know how to how to use the language correctly, yeah, how to use your intonation correctly. Well, it adds to your <clears throat> to your knowledge of the language and to your ability to speak the language uh, naturally and nicely. Yeah, it's important. I do agree with uh, those one who write it in the chat box. Well, so we have practiced the pronunciation and now it's time to focus on 
accuracy because we understand that in any in any phrase uh, every word is important you cannot change for example a preposition about in the phrase what about you because the phrase will actually lose its meaning okay let's see what is suggested by the book here we have a very nice exercise here where the students are asked to complete the dialogue with the missing words and then to listen and check what is good about this exercise it's not just about uh, remembering the words it's uh, first of all it's uh, practicing your listening skills yeah because you will listen and check your answers also it's a kind of exam prep because you have to analyze the sentences you have to analyze the words which go before which go after the gap yet yeah, to make sure the word which you put in matches the gap but again you know uh, i asked my son who is in the sixth form to complete this exercise and he looked at these gaps and told me okay mom uh, i have no clue what to put here and you know i understand why it happens so when we work with adults yeah they can analyze the sentence they look for example at gap three yeah can i la 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 to heracles and they understand that okay we have can which means we have we should have a modal verb or we should have a verb sorry without particle two but kids who are 11 they don't see that yeah you agree with me and i'm really happy about that that is why uh, i as a teacher would help my students a little bit yes and we would make some predictions together with them i would say okay look who are the main characters here it's toby mrs lee harry yeah so which name do you think is missing in that one and i'm sure they will tell me okay mrs lee hello mrs lee and it's uh, so here we need the name of the person who is calling and look who is calling yeah it's toby of course natalia uh, we can predict parts of speech but you know it depends on students uh, i'm not sure that uh, all students in the sixth form uh, know the parts of speech in english especially but anyway, so we help our students uh, somehow to, to predict which words are missing. Yeah, they can write something like that. And uh, then, of course, we would listen to the audio and they would have their answers <coughs> correct. Yeah, everything depends on students. Students are very different. For someone, it can be a pretty easy task yet to complete the gaps. For someone, it can be pretty challenging. So again, if a person is bright, yeah, he or she can work on his or her own. If a person needs some support, yeah, we are in the classroom to help him or her. Well, and then we have one more exercise to, <clears throat> to practice accuracy, which says, look at the dialogue, make a new dialogue, invent new names and use the ideas in the box to help you. Yeah, so actually our students will use uh, the exercise uh, number three, yeah, where they have completed all the gaps, but they will use some fresh ideas from the box given in task number four. But again, how to make sure they will use the phrases? Because our main aim here is not just to give them a, ch a chance to talk with the deskmate, but to make sure they use the phrases we have just practiced. Well, so I can do the following activity with my students. I would give them some slips of paper, like these ones, yeah, with parts of phrases written on them. So they work in pairs. They complete these phrases with the missing words, like that. Then they check whether they have completed the phrases correctly. So they go to our beautiful box with all these phrases. They check if everything is correct. And then they put these slips of paper in the middle of the desk they start talking and 
every time they use the phrase, they get the slip of paper. And who is the winner? The winner is the one who gets the biggest quantity of papers at the end of the conversation, which means the more phrases you use, the better. The one who gets the biggest number of slips of paper is the winner. Students, um, especially young teenagers, they are really competitive and I'm sure that they will do their best to use as many phrases as possible to, to win and to be better than somebody else sitting next to, next to them. Well, so uh, that was our step number two, that was workout, yeah, where we practice pronunciation because pronunciation is essential when we speak about functional language and where we made sure that our students remember the phrases, remember the exact words, remember the patterns which are used in functional language. So we are moving forward. Yeah, so we have introduced the meaning, we have practice, and now is our final step, which is, what do you think it is? Production, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I call it produce. Now it's time for production. We remember that uh, no matter what type of uh, lesson we teach, whether it is grammar or vocabulary or maybe it's skills lesson like reading or listening, every lesson should be wrapped up with some production to make sure our students can produce what they have learned during the lesson. Okay, and again, let's see what the book suggests. Here we have a very nice activity. Yeah, it's a final activity on the page, fun sport, where the students are asked to work in pairs, to practice calling and answering with different names, but to invent a funny dialogue. And you know, students, young teenagers, they are still they're still kids and they love having fun. And of course, they can invent a conversation between Cinderella and Prince. Yeah, Prince calling Cinderella to ask her out. And actually, you can bring them some other pictures or maybe you can show some pictures from the internet. Yeah, showing Shrek and Donkey. Can you imagine how much fun they will have in making up a conversation between Shrek, calling Donkey and asking him to, to go together to save Fiona? or maybe um, a beast calling um, a beauty to ask her out. Yeah, but be ready that your young teenagers who are 11 might tell you, come on, we, well, we are not kids. Why should we talk about fairy tale characters? We want something modern. And then, haha, we are creative teachers. Yes, and we can ask them to make up a conversation between these two. By the way, do you know their names? <laughs> Who are they? Can you type into the chat box? Uh, Bieber, yes, it's Justin Bieber and Billy Eilish. Yeah, the most popular singers among teenagers. Well, and you know, these pictures these people might not be familiar for us for teachers i agree that teachers might not know them uh, but your students do know them for sure and it can be a lot of fun yeah to make a conversation between i don't know justin bieber who invites billy eilish to go to grammy award ceremony or something like that or if you want to show that you are a really cool teacher and you are on the same wavelength with your students, you can show them the pictures like this. We know these guys, by the way. Okay, who can write me the names of these two young men? Yeah, Achitiri. Vlad Achitiri, yes, it's the one wearing pink hoodie. Yeah, it's uh, Vlad A4 and uh, Brian Maps. <clears throat> 
Yeah, they are extremely popular YouTubers and extremely popular Instagrammers who have millions and millions of followers on YouTube. And believe me, your students, especially boys, will be more than excited while making up a conversation between these two people. But again, yeah, my son is crazy about A4. I agree with you because my son is crazy about A4 as well. But again, uh, we are teachers. We are a little bit different generation. And yeah, it's true. We just might not know the names of these people. That is why we can use another way. We can make this activity a little bit more student centered And we can ask the students. Yeah, we can give them the slips of paper. And we can ask them <clears throat> to write the names of their favorite bloggers, of their favorite pop stars or maybe sportsmen yeah then we will collect these papers and then everybody will choose one piece of paper with the name of a celebrity or a sportsman and you can imagine how much fun you will have at the end of the lesson when for example the president of the usa uh, donald trump uh, will call i don't know billy eilish or maybe a nasty kaminsky fan k Believe me, your students will remember this lesson forever. <laughs> and they will continue talking about this activity even when the lesson of English is over. Because actually it's proved that when the students are involved in the activity, when they are a part of the activity, they do it with much more pleasure because it's something that they have invented. Okay, so that was our three-step algorithm of uh, working with functional language. And, and uh, could you remind me what uh, our first step was? Could you type it into the chat box? Notice, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, when we teach functional language, it's very important to give your students a chance to notice these phrases, to make sure how they are used, in which context they are used, right? Whether they are formal or whether they are informal. So make sure they understand the surrounding. Well, the next step was work out yes you're absolutely right so we drill the phrases to make sure they pronounce them correctly and also we practice accuracy and the final step of course was produce and many of you have already written it yeah so remember that any type of lesson <clears throat> must be wrapped up with some production so it was a very <clears throat> nice lesson, yes, very logically built lesson, and I'm sure that if we if we have such a lesson in real life, yeah, it will be productive, and uh, the information we want our students to remember will be remembered. Okay, and you know what I love about Go Getter once again is the fact that uh, such lessons, communication lessons, are in every single unit and uh, in all, all the books from one to four. So, can you imagine that you cover all the course from book one to book four? Your students will learn so many useful functional phrases that they will feel really comfortable and confident when they are in real life situations and when they have to, to use this language uh, outside the classroom. So that was our go-getter number two. And remember that you have all the chances to win this marvelous, to, to win this marvelous book yeah and i'm sure you remember the rules yeah first of all you had to <clears throat> to watch five webinars at least one of them must be watched live and so you can watch four of them recorded and actually you've already watched one live today which is great then wait for a letter from us on the 4th of may you answer five questions 
submit your answers and put your fingers crossed. I'm sure you will be one of those 500 lucky winners of this beautiful book. Я дякую вам всім за увагу. Я дякую, що сьогодні ви були з нами. Ви, я надіюся, що ви дізналися щось корисне для вас і використаєте ці ідеї в своїй роботі онлайн та офлайн. Нагадаю ще раз про сертифікати. Всі ви, всі учасники отримують сертифікати на електронну пошту. А проте це буде не сьогодні, не завтра. Дочекайтеся, впродовж тижня ви обов'язково їх отримаєте. Знову ж таки, Дуже часто ми отримуємо інформацію від наших учасників, що немає сертифіката в скринці, тому провіряйте папку «Спам». Інколи приходять сертифікати і туди. І знову ж таки, якщо ви провірили «Спам», провірили скриньку і не бачите, що ви сертифікат не отримали, пишіть нам на адресу info.dinternal.com.ua і наші колеги обов'язково вам допоможуть. Я дякую вам за увагу. Я дякую прекрасному своєму модератору Геннадію Білусу, і сьогодні дуже швидко відповідав на всі ваші запитання та коментарі. Дякую вам. Якщо у вас є ще якісь питання, ми залишимося тут ще на хвилиночок 5, і я з радістю вам відповім. Дякую. Stay safe. І вам гарного всім дня. Дякую. Так, ви можете переглянути вебінар у, у, у записі і потім відповісти на 5 запитань, які ви отримаєте на пошту. Дякую. І вам 36,6. Прекрасне побажання в, нині, в сучасних умовах. Будьте здорові. Гарного дня. Дякую. Дякую. Так, цей вебінар, ми будемо проводити цей вебінар завтра, тільки сьогодні він проходив у першій половині дня, а завтра цей вебінар буде проходити у другій половині дня, а власне о третій. Тому доєднуйтесь до нас. До побачення. Відео, де ми беремо відео, всі відео, які ви бачите під час вебінарів, під час власне цього вебінару, відео взяти з підручника. О, дякую, що вам все сподобалось. Так, чітко, ясно, просто. Дякую. Дякую, я рада, що вам сподобалось. Дякую всім, будьте здорові, долучайтеся до наших вебінарів, чекаємо на зустрічі з вами. До побачення!